between the state and Muzigwa Wuli, Sibiria, and four others. As the court pleases, my lord, the appearances are still the same for the state. <coughs> The court please my lord, uh, the status quo remains insofar as one to four are concerned. As the court pleases, my lord, the appearances are still the same for accused number five, my lord. The court pleases. As the court pleases, my lord, the matter was postponed today for two reasons. The first reason, my lord, was for the state to furnish confirmation from the director of public prosecutions in South Gauteng regarding the status of uh, Exhibit C. The confirmation has been obtained, my lord, and furnished to the defense uh, this morning. And secondly, the matter was postponed to today for the defense of accused number five, Advocate Michelle Lolo, to give an indication as to whether or when she'll be able to proceed with the uh, cross-examination after the contents of uh, the second docket, first letter is 375441 of uh, Advocate Baloy, if you were to put me in better light, um, we are talking of the first which which connotes that uh, there is a second docket. Uh, I know that we have spoken about two dockets. Yes. Which is first and which is second? Yes. The, the, the first docket, my lord, is the, the one that relates to the current proceedings. There's first letter 636 of 10 of 2014. And the second docket, my lord, is first letter 375 of one of 2019. Advocate Ncholo told us that uh, she only became aware of the second docket. Uh, I think it was Friday, last Friday. Uh, you seemed to be saying the same. 
on, on say that uh, yes. if if not Friday, your awareness of the so-called second docket was uh, um, was at a later stage, and and when would that have been? Yes. There are two issues, the furnishing of uh, the actual copy of the docket and the uh, awareness of the existence of the, uh, of the docket. Malot, in so far as the existence of the uh, docket is concerned, We want to mention that uh, as early as the, the 25th of January, 2022, that former counsel for accused number three had requested further particulars and he directed a letter to the state on the date and in the first paragraph of that letter, he requests contents of uh, case docket for Solores 375 of 1 of 2019. And he mentioned that it was uh, opened and recorded by Colonel Butelezi and Warrant Officer Makubo. So Malot was saying that as far as uh, the 25th of January 2022, former counsel for accused number three was aware of the existence of this docket. It's 375 of what? Uh, 375 stroke one stroke 2019. Yes. And my Lord, as indicated last week, I wrote a letter on the 23rd of March 2022, directed to the investigating officer, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Witelezi. On the 23rd? Yes, on the 23rd of March, 2022. I wrote a letter to Lieutenant Colonel Witelezi requesting a copy of the docket so that it could be disclosed to the defense. And I gave her uh, the deadline of uh, the end of March to submit the docket. You gave her what date? A deadline of the uh, 30th of March, 2022, to submit the docket. Meaning 375? Yes. 375 of 1 of 2019. And as I indicated last week, my Lord, before the end of March, she came to my office with Advocate Tefo. And instead of handing the docket to us, it was then handed only to uh, Advocate Tefo. Before the first of? Um, I think it was around the, the end of March, my lord. Um, don't have the exact date, but uh, it was around the. Sorry? Well, Advocate Tifo um, has just whispered that it was on the 23rd of March. And in fact, at that stage, my lord, uh, indicated to her that if we don't get the copy of the docket, we might consider a uh, subpoena uh, Duque's take him at that stage, my lord. And as also already indicated, my lord, even the investigating team in this matter don't have a copy of uh, that docket.
Malot, we mentioning all these factors to indicate that, as it was widely reported, that it is not as if this docket has mysteriously surfaced now. And when the accused pleaded on the 22nd of April, 2022, advocate... Um, I'm yeah, sorry. I think we should not go into further details. Yes. Because I just wanted to know uh, how the chronology of events yes, yes. unfolded. Yes, but uh, can I just maybe, with the permission of court, just make this one last submission, my lord. When, when the accused pleaded on the 22nd of April, 20, 2022, Advocate Mishola said the following on behalf of accused number five, and I quote, no objection to the transfer of jurisdiction. There is another docket for Solores Cas 375 of 1 of 2019. That is according to my note, my lord. We, uh, if that becomes an issue, we can uh, listen to the record. That was on? Oh, on the 22nd of uh, uh, April 2022, when the accused pleaded. So they themselves, my lord, place it on record that there is another docket, namely First Cast 375 of 1 of 2019. So, my lord, we are saying that uh, already at the plea stage back on the 22nd of April 2022, this docket was mentioned by Advocate Mshololo. We therefore submit, my lord, that no one can assert that they were not aware of the existence uh, of this docket. It was also extensively canvassed in cross-examination by Advocate Tifo. And as I indicated, my lord, on, on, Wednesday, we, on Wednesday last week, that we only got uh, copies I think, this I think you are going back to yes. what I want against. Because, okay, as a court, please, um, I'll leave it there. So. My, my, my sense is that we are not, I just wanted to know the chronology uh, as a court, of please. events. Uh, because uh, uh, <coughs> I, I think uh, the ball is squarely in Advocate Nishololo's court in terms of uh, uh, where she wants to take this. Um, uh, uh, as a court, please. Just one Last and question for clarity from me, if you know, because you seem to be saying that uh, Advocate Tefo was uh, furnished with a copy of that docket, okay. I be it on that 23rd or yes. where, uh, whatever other day, but before the commencement of the of this, this yes. com proceedings. Um, so it was not you, it was not the state in this case, furnishing Advocate Tefor with a copy of that docket. No, was, no, not at all. Was, it, it was the investigating the, officer. Yeah. I'm asking that question because uh, in, in this in this case there are two defense councils, yes. and you mentioned only one of them as having been finished with a copy. Yes, indeed, that is so, my lord. Um, and and you became aware of that. Did you become aware of that that only one? of the two advocates was, yeah, has been finished. 
Um, is the court referring to the date of uh, January that, yes. that I mentioned? Yes. yes. Well, the, uh, the the state has always been aware of the existence of uh, of, of the docket, my lord. Okay. The, even before the date. I'm saying so because only one of the two defence councillors yes. uh, have been defence councils have been has been furnished with a copy. Yes. Uh, which which doesn't sound right. Yes. Um, yeah, indeed, my lord. And as I indicated, even the states, we only got a copy on the same date last week, Wednesday, um, just as um, Advocate Mshololo got got hers. By the way, last week it was on the. I think it was on the eighth, if I'm not mistaken, my lord. I'll just verify. Yes, indeed, it was on the eighth, my lord. Perhaps later on, uh, depending on what happens, my lord, um, would like to get another speaking time to address uh, exhibit, exhibit C, my lord, uh, at the later stage. Okay. Advocate Nsholo. The first point, I think, is just needs confirmation or denial. Uh, which is about uh, the confirmation of the second docket. My Lord, as the court pleases, my Lord. My Lord. I, it is not correct to be, uh, uh, to just to go straight to the point. It is not correct that on the 22nd of April, I addressed this court and said... No, 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 that's a later point. Confirmation of the second docket. That's the point that your colleague started with, which, which he says was, was done. Was it this morning, Advocate Baloy? Uh, about the confirmation, is the court referring to the confirmation? Yes. Yes, yes. We, we gave uh, the letter from the DPP South Houting to the defense this morning, my lord. Should I ask with the, should I ask addressing the letter that have just been given or the response from what uh, Advocate no. Baloy has no. made? What, what, what I am seeking to know yes, my Lord. is whether you confirm that uh, you were finished with confirmation of the existence of a second document, a uh, docket, only, I think you said today. Yes, just just, yeah. just just before the proceedings resumed. Yeah, just yes. just today. Yes, I confirm, my lord. It has just been given to me.
Yes. Now the the other part uh, which you you were about to speak about when I stopped you, oh. um, Advocate Baloy seems to be saying that uh, as far as he is concerned, the defence has been aware of a, of the existence of a second docket. Uh, he mentioned a date. Was it the twenty third? 22nd, my lord, when a plea was made in this court. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. He seems to say that uh, on the 22nd uh, of... Uh, 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 on the 22nd, 22nd, when you... when your, your client pleaded, yes. um, in that process, you made mention of uh, the docket number or, or numbered cast number 375 of one of 2019. Um, I think that is, that is the, the, the first part uh, of your response. Yes, uh, secondly, um, we, when we adjourned uh, last Friday, I mean, uh, not, not last Friday, on the, on the 8th, you mentioned that uh, um, you will need time to be able to determine your readiness to proceed in this trial, given the disadvantage you were put in uh, by virtue of not having been furnished with a copy, uh, yeah, by virtue of not having been informed from the word go about the existence of a second docket and also by virtue of not having been furnished with a copy thereof. As the court business, my lord. Yes. My lord, I think we also omitted the... the should I also address the, his lordship regarding the letter I've just received from the state the in my response? concerning the co confirmation? Yes, my lord. Yes? Thank you. You can start there. Thank you. My Lord, regarding the confirmation that I have received from the State Council this morning, giving clarity of the status of Exhibit C, wherein certain people whose names were read into the record, was sought. has been given or has been provided to me this morning, my Lord, as per the letter dated Yes. Oh, my apologies, my Lord, there is no date, but it's a letter without a date, without a date stamp from the Director of Public Prosecutions, Local Division Johannesburg, wherein he addresses as follows, my Lord. Open court, my Lord. Clarity sought regarding purported correspondence from DPP South Houting in the murder trial, Mr. Senzo Meiwa as per Force Loras case 363-10-2014. Your turn. Stroke 2, stroke 12, stroke 3, dash P, 243, slash 2016, dated 10 June 2022, refers. That's number one, my lord. Can you, can you repeat the reference? The reference. <coughs> Your 10, stroke 2, stroke 12, Stroke 3 dash P 243 slash 2016 dated 10 June 2022 refers. Dated? Dated 10 June, my lord, 2022 refers. Yes. Number 2. This office did not make 
any decision or otherwise regarding the case docket. Yes. Number three, my lord, the alleged documents do not have any status as such was an internal opinion from a junior state advocate which was without merit. Should I repeat, my lord? I heard you to be saying that uh, what is communicated is that that office, the DPP Johannesburg, yes, regards that docket as, as an internal opinion, as, as an yeah, and therefore as having as being of no consequence uh, mm. regarding the the matter. Yes, my lord. Yes. Thank you. I'm terribly sorry um, for the interruption. I I've just received just now, now uh, an up updated version of this letter. I wonder if we shouldn't adjourn just for a short while um, so that I can give. There isn't much difference. Um, just one slight uh, issue that has been added. If we adjourn just for one minute so that I can give them this updated version, my Lord. When did you receive it? Just, just now, now, man. Someone just walked in to, to hand it to me, man. The, the court can just wait in the, in, in the corridor. Man. The court can? Just wait in the corridor. Man. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be back shortly. Yes. Provided no other letter is brought in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Thank you, my lord. My lord, I've just received a second letter uh, correcting the previous one to say that the decision was taken under or as per force for Lauras case 375 stroke 1 stroke 2019. But the content, my lord, is still the same. To say the DPP South Houding is distancing, is saying the, he did not make any decision otherwise regarding this docket, which is the second docket, my lord. And the DPP South Houding is saying the alleged documents do not have any status as such was an internal opinion from a junior state advocate which was without merit. Signed by M. A. Chawuke, Director of Public Prosecutions, Houding Local Division, Johannesburg. Thank you, my lord, for the confirmation of uh, the status of Exhibit C from the author. Then, now, from now, I will be able to cross-examine on the document because I've got the confirmation, my lord. Thank you, my lord. Yeah. Um, ju just Can I move? On? Just maybe some comment in in passing, you know, uh, because uh, you will remember that your colleague also did say that uh, he might want to mention something. I don't know whether it is now or at a later stage. But from my side, I just want to remind everyone, um, especially the three of you, of the system in use in our judicial um, field that uh, <coughs> unlike other jurisdictions, um, France, amongst others, as opposed to the inquisitorial um, system. Yes, uh, the bench in South Africa is, is bound to the accusatorial, if not the adversarial approach. That's the court business. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, you, will, you will find that uh, I, I come across as very non-committal in some of the issues that are popping out from the walls. Um, um, uh, not because of disinterest, yes, but I'm bound to uh, adhere to the adversarial, if not the accusatorial approach in our legal system. Yes, Advocate Baloy. As the court pleases, my lord, um, there are two issues that the state would like to address. The first one, my lord. I, is it now that you need to yes. do that? Okay. Yes. My Lord, the, the, the first issue is the assertion by the defense characterizing Exhibit C 
As a decision of the Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, Johannesburg, I'm not addressing the, uh, the letter that we just <coughs> received, my Lord. I'm just merely going on the argument uh, that was advanced by Advocate Mshololo on, 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 on Wednesday. Um, Exhibit C, my Lord, was uh, characterized as a decision of the Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, Johannesburg, to charge the persons mentioned therein Yes. My Lord, at best, in so far as this document is concerned, Exhibit C, it, it purports to be a memorandum by the author. You say, uh, Exhibit, where it regards the charging of who? Yeah. It, 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 it purports to be um, a memorandum. There's something that I missed. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. There's something I missed. You, you spoke it, about I, I, I somebody said, being it, charged. Yes, I said, uh, the court will recall that Advocate Mshololo read out the names uh, mentioned in the document. It well, was characterized. You mean as the, the charging of people other than the accused yes, in yes, this case? Yes. Okay. And, my Lord, we are saying at best it purports to be a memorandum by the author and it's addressed to the Director of Public Prosecutions, <clears throat> South Gauteng High Court, Johannesburg, and page One to three thereof summarizes the evidence. The author then uh, attaches an unsigned indictment, and here, my lord, the emphasis falls on unsigned indictment. The author also attaches a summary of substantial facts. As well as the, the list of witnesses. And my Lord, was submission that at worst there is no way in Exhibit C where it is stated that the direct, Director of Public Prosecutions, Johannesburg, has decided to charge any person. We therefore, my Lord, we submit with the greatest of respect that it boggles the mind as to why the defense characterized a mere memorandum addressed by the author to the Director of Public Prosecutions as a decision. But advocate to, to charge certain advocate people. Baloy, that, yes. that, that uh, document reports to have emanated from uh, the office before anybody becomes aware of the dynamics you are yes. bringing out now. Yes. Um, what, what should I say? Should I say even I would have been forgiven yes. for thinking that uh, this is an official document yes. but which, which did rounds within the office of the DPP South Scouting, yes. um, um, 
and, and therefore, if anybody says that without the clarity of given, yes. can, can we go and blame such a person? No, no, I'm saying my lot, apart from this document that we have received this, this morning, just on a cursory perusal of this document, that it does not purport to be an instruction as, as it was argued by, uh, by <coughs> my learned friend on, on, on Wednesday on behalf of... Uh, um, yeah, uh, and, but, but I also think in that regard you may well be hitting a dead snake yes. compared to <coughs> what uh, Advocate Michelle, Michelle Olo just told us. Yes, yes. Uh, from what I heard, she said that has, having been clarified, yes. she is of intent to proceed. Yes. Uh, but, uh, to take, uh, to proceed from where she had left. Yes, we will be coming to that point, you know, at the later stage. I'm just saying, even on Wednesday, there was no indication, uh, just by a mere glance at the document, there was no room to argue that this is an instruction. And, my lord, the reason why I'm saying this is that you'll recall that The state was castigated as having thrown these proceedings into shame, my lord. This is the point that we are making, my lord, that that assertion, my lord, by Advocate Mshalolo was incorrect, was erroneous, and we request that it should be withdrawn, my lord. Advocate Mshololo. My Lord, I think the court also does have this exhibit. If I may ask uh, it to be given to the court so that we can read English. Um, was it? Can you give it to the court? Um, exhibit C. I think the secretary is not here. I don't know when, where. Can somebody <coughs> lend me? a copy of Exhibit C. I've made some notes, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think there'll be... Uh, show her the notes. Okay, can I then have it back? Sorry. No, no, I just wanted to, to show Advocate Mshololo the notes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. In case she thinks you, you wrote a message uh, alongside. Yes, yes, my lord. And I think in that, in that, in that regard, the notes should also be shown to Advocate, therefore. Thank you, my lord. That's right. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. What do I have to look at? <laughs> notes. I said notes. There are notes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, my lord. Can I start, my lord? Yes. Thank you. My Lord, before, initially, as the court has just alluded to that effect that I indicated specifically to say, my Lord, this document is unsigned. And as a result of that, before I can be able to cross-examine on this document, <laughs> I will need a confirmation from the author, my Lord. That's what I said before I started my address, my Lord. And then I said, the reason why I need the reason or confirmation from the author, my lord, 
it's because there are names on page three, my lord. One, two, three. Yes. It's because there are names referred to on page three, my lord, which I would like to read together with this court so that we can understand English here. It says the director of public prosecutions for the Gauteng Local Division of the High Court of South Africa who prosecutes, my lord, for and on behalf of the state hereby informs the Honorable Court that the following people, the names, my Lord, I read into the record. And I'll jump the names, my Lord, and go to the second page wherein it says, are guilty of the following crimes. That's a decision, my Lord. Are guilty of the, the, the following crimes. Despite it having is being unsigned uh, and my lord i was not saying it's a valid document i was just reading as is my oh, lord. you are saying that's how it came across to you that's how it came across to me yeah, my i lord. think that's, that's what i said this as thank well. you my lord i just read it as is my lord all right okay and therefore it cannot be said that i i i i I said wrong things that uh, the decision is made uh, by the DPP when I read the content of this exhibit as is my lord. And I was trying to base the reasons why I need confirmation from the author, my lord. And as, as I have received the confirmation from the author this morning, I have accepted and acknowledged it, my lord. And I said I will then now be able to cross-examine on the content of this. We are still going to cross-examine on the content of this. Yes. Thank you, my lord. My lord, can I proceed with the... Yes, please. ...further answers the court wanted me to respond. My lord, regarding the knowledge of the second docket, which is false Loras 37501, 2019. Uh, my lord, the state indicated that they were aware of this docket by January this year. And from the state submission, my lord, there is no way in the state is saying they informed me regarding the existence of such docket. My lord, <clears throat> the state further informs this court that on the 23rd of March 22, he directed a letter to Lieutenant Colonel Buteles requesting a copy of the docket, which was never given to him, but it was given to my learned friend advocate, therefore, in his presence. My Lord, I was not present during that exchange of this, the docket, which is the second docket. Yes. And the state is informing this honorable court, my Lord, to say the docket was not given to him, but it was given to the defense counsel. After that, the trial started, my Lord, on the 11th of April. When the trial started, 
the state had not disclosed to me the existence of this docket. And now the state is lying to say, I said to this court, I know about this second docket. And I'll ask my lord that we do a transcript for the appearances of the 22nd of April, wherein a plea was made on behalf of the accused. The only thing that I, co I, I, I consented to, it was the letter of the Director of Public Prosecutions regarding the jurisdiction of this court having to try this matter. And my lord, to say I knew about the existence of this docket, does that mean that I was given that docket? Or the state is just shifting the blame now? The state had a duty, my lord, in terms of accused number five constitutional right to disclose this docket to me, and they, they had not done that. Yeah. And the explanation, my lord, that is given by my learned friend, which due respect, my lord, is not acceptable to say the docket was not given to him. He was, he was also, the state was also denied a, a access to the docket up until the court, this trial started. Wherein the state ought to have compelled, the state could have sought for an order, my lord, in this honorable court compelling the SAPS to deliver such docket. So in other words, the, the NPA failed to control SAPS regarding the access of this docket. They were also denied access to this docket. Is that what this court should believe, my lord? I submit, my lord, that that is not the position. The SAPS opens the docket, and after opening the docket, they take it to the DPP. The DPP is the one who is vested with powers to supervise investigations, to control the docket, to demand the docket as and when the docket is required. And before the trial starts, my lord, if there is any other docket which was opened regarding one case, the state prosecutor, even a junior, my lord, is supposed to collect all the existing documents, whether they were declined or whether they were referred to alternative dispute resolution, but the procedure within the NPA is that all the dockets have to be collected and combined in one docket so that they can be disclosed to the defense before the trial starts. And now the prosecutor, my lord, here is shifting the blame as if the docket had been disclosed to me before the trial started, which is not the position, my lord. I am the one, my lord, who engaged with Mr. Bandoy after seeing the second statement of Mr. Mosia. I asked Mr. Baloy pers personally, my lord, to say, to confirm if he, this docket does exist, and he confirmed. Then I said, please, can I have the full content of this docket? That is how it came to my attention. I have no reason, my lord, to hide before this court if the docket had been given to me. I had no information about this docket when the trial started. And what makes the things worse, my lord? The state allowed me an accused number five to plead when he had not been furnished with adequate information regarding this case. My lord, without... Without telling this court or, or disclosing the information contained in the second docket, but it is about the same cause of action that you are dealing about in this matter. It is about the same count that you are dealing about in this matter. So as a result of that, my lord, the state had to, and the state had a legal duty, my lord. It is not a favor. Accused number five constitutional right has been violated. 
to such an extent that, my Lord, had we known about the existence of this docket, we would not have pleaded as we have pleaded. And right now we are in a predicament that we, 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 are, we are unable to conduct our defense further as a result of this uh, late disclosure of the police docket. The state knew about this docket, my lord, and neglected or decided not to disclose it to accused number five, and thereby violated the accused number five constitutional right. And that on its own, my lord, amounts to a miscarriage of justice. Yes. From day one, I received the docket. I informed this honorable court about the existence of the docket, which was last week, the 8th of October, or the 8th of June, my lord, 2022. That was the first time I received that docket from the state. And that's a non disclosure, my lord, by the state. And the state is not the one who is going to suffer the prejudice, my lord, by this non-disclosure. It is accused number five, whose constitutional right has already been violated. And his right, accused number five right to a fair trial, has been violated, my lord. That is why, my lord, I'm saying the reason furnished by my learned friend is not sufficient to say he was also not given a docket, but it was given to the defense for accused number one to four. The state should have compelled the SAPS to produce this docket. Yes. Regarding my lord, the second part of uh, uh, the response to say how long do I need as I have suggested my lord, After receiving further particulars during trial, I still need to request for further particulars from the state. And after that, we still have to do a pre-trial conference and also deal with the admissions thereon. <coughs> There are particulars that are not contained in this docket. It has been sifted. And I need to clarify all those issues, my lord, with the state. Yeah. As I have indicated, my lord, last week that the remaining period, which is today up until Friday, which was uh, the date for the, the date in which we were supposed to sit in this matter, are insufficient, my lord. Yes. And therefore, I will ask that the matter be urgent, depending on the dates that we get from the role coordinator, my lord, then we will be able to come before this court. If the dates available from the role coordinator are too soon, I will then indicate, my lord, if they are insufficient. But if the dates <coughs> given by the role coordinator are maybe at a later period, I will indicate, my lord, to say they are suitable to me. And my lord, I ask that an order be made that the transcript for the 22nd of April be done to prove wherein my learned friend says, I said, I know about the existence of this docket. And above that, my lord, knowing about the existence of the docket, it's something else. 
Section 87 does not say that the state has to inform the defense about the existence of the second docket. It says the state must disclose the information, including the statements contained in that docket. And that was not done by the state in this matter. which amounts to a miscarriage of justice, my lord. <coughs> the trial is now going to be delayed because of the non-disclosure of the state. The, sta the trial is going to be delayed because accused number five rights have been violated. And the violation is, un is incurable, my lord. I will address at a later stage regarding that. I still want to deal with the docket that I've received before I can be able to come back before this court with the appropriate application as the court pleases, man. addresses are not supposed to be interpreted to the accused. Yes. Sisters my apologies. U advocate Ubaloy. Which are the legal and gun to all the lena, my land is Momo, no Mizza to Espangele Uguti. We begged in Zulem with a status, not to beg, Bessel Kali, Sessela Namusa, Begu Guti, Begu, Itogo, Amatogoto, Namaitogoto, Lesbian, Elu 3751, Cat 2019, Kanyagan and Wati, Ibisitello Yena, Umeli Wake, Umanga, Lelosan, who advocate Um Sholo, Mati Leoga, Abai Tolile, Exasa Namusa. Nayege was a Ingrisella Genago advocate, Um Sholo, Maela, Nalel Togot, Lesbian, Elo 3751, Cat 2019, Maela Nesmo Mesa Tatuage, Wing Candole Pageme, Eas South Houten, Ejuana Speg. Futige El Gushoge, who advocate Ubalo Ugutin Nayege, Itogot, Nomikopi, Elo Togot, Lelo Ultole, Gokfana, Nayo advocate, Um Sholo. Well, let's start with Vigal and Zule. It ate what we ate, Kachun, Ulonyaga Suguana, or twenty twenty two. August Vigan, Nama Ogunyege, Oguveziwe, Konala Nage, Oguti, advocate Mshola, Ubese, Jelaga, and Gandolo, Oguti, when Nemege, Mobage, Use, Stoli Lege, Stonisegi, so Nomaga logo, Opaliwe, Gula, Gunwati, Ebuya Konage, a South Houten, La Basho Konage, Oguti. Uh, it's no more a tat to a no mage bonage, be a benga mele as a shushisa, a south hotel, be clanisa, nes no more a tat to a conalapo, go by betige, loco, guabu, guabu, uvo, lomunia wabo, or sebenza conalapo, footiga batumabem kazag, bati we advocate, etuniage, kunabane, ugutige. Ku mangalelo no mage go chesis, no ma kushushiswe, aban to amaka mage, afundi we vegi elen rule. Futige nala konage ngo gushogwa ke u advocate ubalo y uguti, la gu kazwa no ma ugwenze gile konala paya nage uguti, lea nwati ga kwagu ignwati enga saindiwe, uguti njeba i kasa nguguti y memo, kota gunge sona, is no mo esa tatwa, y ovisi, la benga mele ezu kshushisa, e south houten. Kwa tuage ute umese ipinda se kaza age uadvocate mshola lolo kwa wakaza uguti. Ngeenje la yena age ebe kaza ngayo noma egusho ngayo la inkandolo kufigele ndule. Waye funda loko okpaliwe kona la payana uguti iovisi ele nga mele ezo kshushisa e South Houghton e Joanna Speck. Li tate noma kutatwe ishnu umo so kuti kumangalewe futike kuboshwe laba abalande layo ase amakama abo e fundu age. So uti yena age abe gwenza uguti nje ebe kaza loko no ma efunda loko ekbona kupalwe pansi kui dokumenti ebuya konage kutipipi kotwa ge 
document Advocate <laughs> Kulaboke abashela i amalanga uguti i kala geli kule sekuzo bora kala kona la poge uguti ilipi ilanga elizoti i kala lishete selolona uguze ashogo uguti ugulungele yin uguti akubegele pambili noma uzo bora kala uguti na iteti esondele kakulu ogonya futi akvezilo advocate mshoro uguti ge Bengege ke noma ngoba lelia toko tolila noma lelia sasmu mulesi ana sasi puma ngapagati ke ku ofisi la bezo shushi so ngege ke noma ke ku ichunya advocate noma ubani ke aya sanga ni so amatoko to uma ngaba eshuge ne a abenda wonye kube ila kona ke ku enziwa itoko to eli loto so uguti ke ku ichunya advocate loko agusho loto na yeye uya ku azuguti ke loko anga ku enzo ngoba esebenza ku lelia ofisi futi ke kube uye na umuntu e tolila yuko advocate baloi e muva kubu statement says Yes, this is the court, Your Lordship. <coughs> I'm worried, Your Lordship. I'm at court today. It seems I'm not recognized. I'm here. Can I be recognized? <laughs> you are recognized. Thank you. Your Lordship, I want to make an address to the Honorable Court. However, I see that the time is not on my side. Can I address this Honorable Court after tea time? <clears throat> we'll adjourn until half past. There you have it, court in adjournment until half past 11. We'll take you back there as soon as uh, they uh, resume. But some of the points that came up this morning, uh, Advocate Michelle was saying the state had a legal duty. Yes, it is a court, Your Lordship. Uh, we, here we say Your Lordship, not Your Worship. Lordship? Yeah. What did I say? Your Worship. <laughs> Apology. 
apology is a slipper of the tongue, which is not the fault of my mind. In reality, I wanted to say Lordship. And you are Lordship, Justice Maumela. Thanks for indulgent, uh, Lordship. Um, I heard my learned colleagues from the state and from the defense accuse five. Then I'm happy that I'm now recognized. No, about, uh, Lordship. about you are hopping on about recognition. You were recognized the moment you introduced yourself. Maybe yes. I should sensitize you to one thing. You always sit behind that block oh. and you go lower. Okay. I always presumed you are there until one day we were proceeding and you, you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I knew you to be in court. Uh, so you are, you are recognized. Oh. It's just that when I can't see you, I can't call you because uh, I, I can't see you. you. From the beginning of this trial, you hide me. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> And I, I was not internet to hide, Olesi. Thanks for okay. realizing. Yeah. For if you come and sit here and some, ask somebody to sit there the way you sit, you yeah. realize that you see nothing. Definitely. Yes. Okay, yes. let's proceed. No, I'm aware now. Thank you. Olesi, uh, in relation to um, the um, concern of my uh, learned uh, friend, Advocate Mushololo, in response to what she raised uh, previous on the last adjournment, which was Thursday, I mean Wednesday, whereby I gave the court excuse that my attorney was there. So is that <clears throat> um, I understand that uh, she. Asked, I cannot use a heavy weight to say demanded. She asked the state via Advocate Waloi to get explanation insofar as Exhibit C and D were concerned. Exhibit C and D, Your Lordship, are brought or is a part of the submission of IQs 1 to 4. <coughs> and the purpose of Exhibit C in particular, because it is the one that uh, uh, is the, the one that triggered the request of explanation for the certain individuals who were mentioned <coughs> by the names. And at the time when I was introducing the document, Exhibit C, the names were mentioned that these people were supposed to have been charged instead of uh, my client, accused one to four. And by that time, I vividly remember, I didn't just confine to accused one to four, but I said all accused, including five, that they are wrongfully before this court. And the relevant uh, suspect who should have been arrested and prosecuted by Advocate Baloi are those on Exhibit C. In state, they were not, and I wonder why. Then, what purport to be the explanation of the DPP? Advocate M. H. Hauke, South Hauti. There are two documents here. We were first given this 
document. The subject is about phosphorus cast 636 stroke 10 stroke. Yeah, if you were not to 2011, if four. you were not to repeat that, we all know it is common knowledge that there is there are those two dockets. If you go straight to your point. And today, Your Lordship, humbly so, because there is no CIA to be cross-examined. I'm begging this honorable court to afford me opportunity to make submission to the best of my ability without interruption. That's my humble plea. And I'm going As to repeat a lot of things. Our fight, advocate, therefore, is when you repeat things that are already common knowledge. You are not I'm which, not fighting which, with you, and I'll never fight with I, you. I'm also not fighting with you. Maybe the word fight is wrong. Yeah. yeah. Can you withdraw the fight? Because I'm not fighting, and you are not fighting. I'm not. Rep I don't. I don't think I should repay, re re withdraw anything. You are the one who came with the word fight, and I said I'm not fighting with you, and I will never fight with you. This is not about me and you, advocate. Uh, therefore, it's exactly. about. Other, other people. Exactly. We, we, there's no need to fight. I agree, 127%. Yes. And I will give you time, but when you, I feel that you are repeating, I will raise my concern, like I do with everyone. No, it does not happen to everyone, Your Lordship. It happens to me. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm saying today, okay. I'm pleading. There's okay. no one who can say I'm hurrying to cross examine Mr. So today is for this day for us to talk about these issues. It is definitely not a day for repetitions. It is a day for submissions. That I will allow you to do. You can submit on end until the evening. You can do that. So this document, uh, my learned uh, colleague, Advocate Mushololo, as per her request, it seems that she has accepted it. This document. Uh, like I said, initially it was, that's where I was interrupted when I was about to say the first one. That's where I was interrupted. Hence I say, that's my plea today. Let me be allowed to exercise my talent that God gave me. My to plea today? Thing. Yes. Avoid repetition. So, this one, I don't know how do we, for the purpose of progress, and the, the court and everyone listening here and watching and Skype and everything, wherever, overseas, we know we are watched everywhere. This first one, I'll call it the document. The subject is a 636. And then this one was correcting it. It's 375. This came late. So I start with this one, 636. Even though it was not my Are request. you aiming to do that now? Pardon? Are you aiming to do that now? Yes. No. Yes. You can't do that now. Advocate Nsholol. Yeah. Raised issues which prompted these documents, these two documents you are talking about. Yes. To come before court. Mm -hmm. When, after advocate... I, Earlier on, I did say we will also need to listen to you. Then, Advocate um, uh, Baloy gave some background issues. Advocate Mshololo told this court, because she's the one um, on the podium now, that she is still to come with an application. I haven't had Unless I missed something, I haven't had Advocate Nshololo's application. Let, let, let me correct the court. And, and now you are addressing me on issues that hinge, on issues that may affect the application. And after her application, you would be given an opportunity to address the application before the state, before the state responds. Because if I now jump from people without dealing fully with what Advocate Mshololo is bringing, I, I, it will confuse me as well. Application, what is the court referring to when you say application? The Advocate, the, the advo advocate Mshololo spoke about a proper application 
she's bringing because of the two documents. And now before she brings that ad application, you, you are rising, addressing me on the two documents. That, that, that formed the basis of the, of the application Advocate Mishalon told me this morning, in your presence, if you were present. Application to postpone this matter? Yes. Yes. That's where I... And, and my sense was that mm. if she brings the application, Advocate Tefo must really be given an opportunity to say his say, respond, oppose, or agree, whatever. Now you, are, you, you said you, you want to address me, and to my surprise, you are addressing me about what Advocate Mshololi is still to come up, up with. Uh, because I've stayed here for a long time, giving Advocate Mishola the opportunity and my learned colleague, uh, Advocate Valoy, because they were owning the podium on Wednesday, and then that's where we are today, to extend that the matter has been postponed to today, whereby I'm also the part, we are also the part of the proceedings. But now, so you, now, sound, but now you sound to be responding to an application yet to be made by your colleague. I, can, I cannot listen to your response before I hear everything she, she needs to say. How will I be able to place what you are going to tell me bef before I listen to her? Well, there are certain issues that I, I, I need to object to your Lordship that are not, which are not correct. And yes, somebody you, said, you, you somebody will have said, that time to object if, somebody, if they have to do with this. No, no, Unless no. it's something else that has nothing to do with those documents, then you can, you can speak. I don't need this to come to that so-called application. I need to respond now. Because if I can let it until that application, so I will be just uh, say, let's, if we, we object, we objecting to say no. That no. application cannot be. Because no. there, is a, there is a precipitation towards that uh, uh, application. And then myself, or I uh, accuse one to four, we just see, already we see the prejudice already before we can go far. That's why I say, I don't let it this to go far. But that doesn't I have to give come you, in now. It doesn't give you the right to kick her out of her space. She's still going on with these issues. When she's done, I will give you the opportunity. I want to believe that if I cannot come now, it will be that uh, what Advocate Valoy has said, for which it was not me, Advocate uh, Mushalala said, he is lying. I'm not on that, I'm not, I'm not on that vocabulary to say Advocate uh, Valoy is lying. What I'm saying is that Advocate Valoy misled this court. So that's where is now opportune for me to come in here it before is no, we go to the application. In this court, you, it is not opportune. In this court, it is the opportunity for Advocate Mishalol, given the chronology we have had and the response, to go and prepare herself and come and, uh, and launch her application. This issue is still underway and you cannot uproot me from concentrating on what your colleague is telling me. You are there, you are free to listen, even to note down if you want to note. This matter shall never be decided without you being given an opportunity to address. It is not now, if those are the issues. Okay. Or oh, it may not be now, but it's today. It may not be, it, it may, it may not be today, it depends on what Advocate Mshololo is going to show as the way forward. No, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have to be today. No, Your Lordship, I need to be, please, be heard, be given a hearing. I'm, I will, I'm finished. I, I, will, will, I haven't even started yet. I will listen to you. Until I haven't even started. And uh, as long as it Unless has nothing to do with that, uh, uh, that application that Advocate Mshololo is still to come up with. She has been requesting and pleading for days to be given an opportunity to launch her issues before court without disturbance. I have thrice apologized to her for the disturbance. And unless this is something else, it is another disturbance of Advocate Michelon to tell us uh, she spoke about going 
to um, uh, uh, to 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 study the papers further about uh, consulting further the the problem that I have which which I also had the other day is that when it's when advocate uh, therefore thinks it's time for him to speak or thinks it's time for the court to pronounce one two three it must happen and that's not how things happen I never said that the other day I had to warn you when you were demanding that the court should go a particular direction. And I'm saying now, as the presiding officer in this case, it is time to give Advocate Mshololo the opportunity to proceed with what she started in your absence, but you had left your ears, as you always say, you leave your ears here. Um, and she is not done. Can my Atina address, uh, address before? Yes. You want to... Let him address. There's a court, please, my lord. Maybe I'll come to the assistance, your worship, my lord. Um, Advocate Mshololo, yes. my lord, <coughs> admitted these two documents. Uh, he asse she accepted them. Yes. 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 Yeah. Her application is something else. Now, my instructions to my advocate is to deal with these documents because uh, Advocate Mshololo already acknowledged them and she accepted them without raising any issues with them. Advocate Mshololo, are you done with this? Are we not going to hear from you about these papers anymore until the end of this trial? I'm not done, my lord, as I indicated. <coughs> my lord, Advocate Mshololo said she will make an application. Yes, based on those two papers. And I want to listen to Advocate Michelle Michel and deal with what she has to say. And if the two of you want to bring issues based on that, the time is still open. And I am refusing to be dragged into what you are bringing before I finalize that. I don't want my record to confuse even myself. Uh, I agree with the court. Thank you very much. Because the reason why my advocate was standing up, my lord, is because it was not clear from Advocate Mshololo what kind of application is she's going to make and based on what. Now she's clarifying that she's going to make application based on these documents. Therefore, I think on, based on that, I'll advise my advocate not to address the court based on these documents and then maybe we hear from uh, Advocate Mshololo whether she wanted postponement to make that application or what? Yeah, she gave, she gave an indication. She has already told us. She told us that she is going to study further what she has. She is going to consult further with her client. And she'll, she'll then decide what nature of an application, if any, she will bring. When she is done, all these issues, including those documents, you're on behalf <coughs> of accused number one to four. You'll have all the space to address court. You know, uh, my lord, the reason why we stood up is on the premise of the submissions made by the state. Yes. Which we, we differ yes. with that submissions. You, you have and that application of, yes. of, of Advocate Mishalo is not based on the submissions made by the state because her, 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 her application is based on, on these documents. Whatever, you, whatever you, uh, Advocate Baloy addressed the court about today, Advocate Mushalala did respond on that. But I keep on saying to you and your colleague, don't uproot me from what Advocate Mushalala. You have things have disturbed Advocate Mushalala. Please don't disturb me. I'm listening to Advocate Mushalala. When I'm done about the issues she has put on the table, you will have all the space in the world to come up with your own issues if, if you, if you okay. have your yeah. own issues. Basically, issue. my lord, you're saying we must sit down and my Advocate Mushalala must proceed for now. I don't know whether she'll proceed. Thank you, my lord. That's what I've been saying from the beginning. I've been saying that from the beginning. Uh, just, just for the record, the reason we need to address this is because of the defectiveness of these documents. 
So if Advocate Mushololo is going to address this court in terms of her application based on this, let it be on record that she will be addressing that application on the defective document if from those, the DPP. If those documents are defective today on the 13th of June 2022, even on the 31st of December 2022, they will still be defective. So it will still be open for you to address the defectiveness without interjecting advocate Mishololo in her process. She started a process from last week. She's busy with it. We cannot have something in between without undermining advocate Mishololo and her client. No one is undermining advocate Mishololo, Your Worship. And what uh, 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 the imperative thing, the, the material issue is that the document that advocate Mishololo is also talking about, as I said, C and D are the brainchild of IQOS 1 to 4. So yeah. they've got nothing to do with Advocate Musololo. I think I have given enough explanation. I now come to rule. The ball is in the court of Advocate Musololo. Well, let's, let's, let us Whoever say, has something else will address me later, even if it's on another day. Thank you. Advocate Musololo, you did indicate that uh, you are going to look at everything that yes. has been brought your way, including the docket. You did indicate that there's a possibility you might need to uh, consult with your clients. Yes, the court pleases my lord. And you did say, if I heard you well, yes. that based on that, uh, you will consider yes. what nature of application. The appropriate one. Yes. Yes, my lord. Uh, so is that your final position submissions yes my lord yes and when is that application coming my lord it's not today because i still have to consider i have to read i have to consult and then we can arrange the the, the dates with the role coordinator my lord but it's not today i think you did mention the role um, the role planner yes my lord um, and I think what I what I I had thought I would have is the responses of your colleagues about yes, yes. consulting with the role planner and everybody involved, um, and also possibilities of enrolling this matter in a manner that will assist yes, my lord. speedy finalisation. Yes, my lord. I'm indebted to the court, my lord. Mr. the court, please. Advocate Baloy. What I hear Advocate Mshololo saying is that emanating from the documents we have been shown today, the two letters, um, uh, also emanating from the second docket that emerged, uh, for my purposes, I became aware of it last week. She intends to study everything <coughs> further. She intends to, uh, to consult with the uh, clients further. And she, it's, it's, my own, it's my own way of putting it. She cannot rule out a, an application based on everything that has emerged. And uh, even the application as she sits there, she doesn't know yet what nature of application it shall be. Yes, your comment? Yes, as a court, please, my lord. As far as the request to, for time to consider the second docket, first letter is 375 of 1 of 2019. The state has got absolutely no objection, my lord. I think it's um, you know, we've made it clear, my lord, even on Wednesday, that she can get as much time as she wants. We are not going to uh, object against uh, postponement as far as that is concerned, my lord. Um, as far as the letters are concerned, uh, my, my sense was that 
and, and I don't want to misquote here, but that, you know, they're being accepted. I, I didn't think that the further issues, you know, that are, you know, that have been raised. I think there's a rider there. Uh, let us not delude ourselves. There's a rider she put yes. that she's going to look at everything, everything a good else. Yes. And on, based on that, she reserved her right to consult her clients further. Um, and she said, well, based on that, she will still come back to court with, and she, she feels that there might be an application of uh, a nature she cannot tell now. Uh, as the court pleases, we'll then uh, hold back on our submissions regarding this letter until such time as the, uh, the application, application is brought, my lord. And um, it hasn't been officially uh, handed up. I wonder if maybe we should not maybe um, officially um, hand up the the letter. It is well. It has been read into the record, but uh, I, I think in light of the debate that has been generated regarding the uh, first Lotus three seven five four four one of twenty nineteen. I, I, I suggest that uh, the letter be officially uh, handed up, my lord. Uh, uh, Advocate as, Nshololo, as an exhibit. You, you read two letters. Actually, you read one and you were interrupted by the second letter. Um, the court position. The thinking on the part of your colleague yes, is ma'am. that these letters be handed in into the record. Into the record. But I think we, sh we need to submit the last one, which is the corrected version. Um, we don't know. We, we don't know. We don't know whether Advocate Tefo will confine himself only to the second letter. Second. When he was addressing me, he was waving both letters okay. to me. So um, I, 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 will be, I will be apprehensive in trying to close the first letter out. My Lord, uh, with that, uh, I will ask that we submit both letters, uh, which I've also read into the record. I think we were last on Exhibit D, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, my, in light of the fact that it, the letter pertains to Exhibit C, my suggestion would be that we hand up both letters as Exhibit C in brackets 1, As, as far as both letters are concerned, my lord. So we can make, we can mark it as exhibit C1 and C2. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Advocate, okay. therefore, the suggestion to admit the letters as C1 and C2, exhibit C1 and C2, what is your response? Objection, your lordship. Yes? Objection? Um, I say objection because I'm coming to object. These two letters are subject of my dispute insofar as the contemplated application will be coming. And uh, it is clear that somebody is trying to make a fishing here. If I wouldn't even uh, uh, make my submission in relation to this two letters, as I allege that there are serious material defect, uh, defects on these letters. And you have seen them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want me to see them? Because they are submitted into the record so that when they are debated, I also have sight of the letters. But I wanted to raise this and raise, uh, raise those defective. So now, no. now I'm, I'm told... The I'm defectiveness of... Or can, can I respond, Your Lordship? I made, a ruling, I made a ruling, Advocate therefore, that we are not going to debate what we are raising now. Should I not answer you? Re answer me about whether you, are, you agree with them being submitted as exhibits. That's the only issue. No, but it's, it's unfair for the court to confine me. Okay. Okay, that is the only it's rather thing. rather that there must be an answer written there, then say, I must see that answer by no, the court. No. I've got my no. answer different to the court. No, I'm not going to, do, to allow that. I'm, so I'm why not am going I asked to, to stand up? Huh? Why am I asked I to stand up? I asked you to address me about 
the submission of the letters as exhibits so that when they are debated, I have seen them, I have gone through them. That is the only issue. Now we are going back to an issue about which I have made a ruling. You see, what, what has been done here by Advocate Baloy and Msolol, Advocates Baloy and Msolol, is that, hence I'm saying, I see some fishing because they don't know which, which side will they focus, which angle, you see. There's like, I'm the strike, um, I'm number nine. Advocate, advocate I, I rule that you sit down. You are not addressing what I asked of you. Sit down. Advocate, uh, advocate uh, Baloy, uh, so, if you want to submit the <coughs> exhibits, that's the, the time to do it is now. But you're, you're, you too, I, I don't know what you are testing in me. I don't know. What, what, manner, what manner of demeanor is this? I'm trying to help the court. And yeah, you, but but you, you allow your, your friend to drag this court out of its course, only later to say you want to help. No, my lord, I apologize for that. I understand. Uh, Dragging down, because he's delaying us. My lord, I, I apologize for that. Hence, we are saying, uh, we accept them being marked as C1 and C2. That's we, I, I advise my, my advocate that in B marked C1 and C2. That's it. Th thank you, Mr. Tawan. Thank you, my lord. The letter dated the 10th of June, 2022, from the Director of Public Prosecutions, Scout and Local Division, Johannesburg, is marked as Exhibit C1. Letter dated 13 June 2022 from the same office, it's Mark C2 and handed up as exhibits now. By agreement, exhibits C1 and C2 are admitted into the record of the proceedings of this case. Lord, what remains now is to arrange the date for the next proceedings of uh, this matter. And I suppose, my Lord, that um, we will first have to get an indication from Advocate Michelolo at that future date, what the, the, the plan is uh, going ahead. So perhaps we should, uh, I suggest maybe we postpone it just for a, for a week or so, just to, uh, to get an indication, and we, get, we can then take it from there. The um, role planner had tentatively given dates, but uh, I think we, perhaps need to discuss them with my uh, learned friends. The first dates that I have is the 5th to the 16th of September, and the next dates are the from the 14th of November. Maybe we can just <coughs> adjourn so that council can then um, 14th check, of November check, to where? Check, check their diaries. 
Uh, I'll just quickly check. 14th of November until when? Um, I'm, I'm just quickly checking a lot. Sorry, 4 to 14 November. And 5 to 16 September. The 4th to the 14th? Yes, the 4th to the 14th of November, my lord. Because it's issues that have to do with what we have raised, Advocate Mshololo, what is your response to the suggested date? Both dates are suitable to me. If we choose the first one, it's, as, it's suitable, my lord. That's the court basis. Advocate Tefo. I still feel grief, as I case one to four, that we are definitely being excluded from these proceedings by this court. Okay. Because there are very, okay. very if material. If you are not going issues. to respond to what I asked you, sit down. Sit down, advocate. <coughs> advocate, therefore, if you are not going to address dates, sit down. I cannot be unless, forced unless you are, you want to be in contempt of this court. You can. You, I I asked you a specific question. If you are not answering me on that, sit down. Unless you have the best way, let's go to the chambers. Finish no, I'm chair. not going to the chambers. About but you, you trying to this. undermine me in court. I'm not going to any chambers. But now the case one to four has been undermined here. We sit cannot. Down. Sit down. We cannot prolong this uh, sit, this case. Sit down. Yeah. Advocate, sit down. But I don't agree to that. Advocate Baloy, there is no agreement about the date. I suggest that we find a preliminary date to which we postpone without the involvement of the court, but with the involvement of the role planner, you will go and agree upon dates. But let's have an intermediary date. Yes, my understanding was that Advocate Mishalolo falls in with any of the dates she said, yeah. it, yes. Ad advocate uh, Tefo disagrees. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps we should just adjourn to see if we can find uh, then a, a, um, a, a middle course. For how long? Um, the issue of days can take time. I suppose <coughs> council. I'm sorry. I think, my lord, we can adjourn until uh, after lunch so that you can arrange it during lunchtime. What time is it now? It's quarter past 12, my lord.
Advocate Baloy. My Lord, we did have discussions about the dates. The role planner has indicated that the third term is already full, my Lord, and that those, d those dates that we've already provided are the, 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 the only dates, my Lord. We've been given the option of uh, blocking both dates so that we continue on, on, on both dates, the, the 5th to the 16th of September, and we continue again from the 4th to the 14th of uh, November. Uh, because that's what I wanted to say, that uh, the way things work out here, each time you don't occupy dates, yes. you fall into the risk of yes. going further into, yeah. into the future. Yeah, indeed. And uh, what, we, what we said, or what we seemed to agree upon, all of us, was that uh, if possible, we should find a speedier way as opposed to a slower one. To, to proceed to finality with this matter. Indeed, my lord. We will also inform that uh, the first term next year is still open for, for that block booking. Uh, should, should you want to go into the... In yeah. if, if possible, that, that, that should be the way to go. Otherwise, we'll have this matter proceeding forever. And like I said, my worry is that uh, uh, some, some are not coming from woe coming for this trial. So, um, if the period is too protracted, it, it, it will start painting a very uh, negative picture on everything. Indeed, my Lord. Uh, Advocate Defos indicated that she would like to, to address the court. Now. Please go to your lordship. <coughs> we wish to come and see your lordship in the chambers. We requested the councils. Advocate Valley was amenable. Advocate Michel Allah blatantly refused to come to the chamber. Hence, we cannot come while we are not. Um, in agreement, all of us. Hence, fourth word to address, the intention was that, Your Lordship. The intention what? was? The intention was to say the following in the chambers, that whatever played itself before this long adjournment or short break, as that as the defense of our case one to four, we are of the strong view that the justice will not be dispensed with for the case one to four because the counsel or the defense of our case one to four has been excluded to these proceedings to extend that the court will tell the counsel of Akers 1 to 4, sit down. Like the court is talking to somebody who doesn't understand himself. For which, as the counsel, as the lawyer, I respect the ethics of this profession. And it is incumbent upon me, or is demanded, by the ethics of the profession to pay due diligence to my client. When the court is doing everything in its power to mute me unreasonably, when I have to make the submission that I be told to sit down, I be confined to setting decision that is not of mine, that I won't be part of that. Just to make to rubber stamp the decision that is, which is so adverse 
against my client. It's unethical. And the rules and the ethics of my practice or this profession, the honorable profession that I chose and I've made an oath that I will be by by the rules, by the ethics of the practice to the end. The main buzzword is to pay due diligence. The maxim in the profession of law says justice delayed is justice denied. I feel strongly to the extent that as a human being, when I'm of the conviction and not just conviction, but a strong conviction that the constitutional rights of my client are deliberately violated by the court that I expect to be impartial. The court that I respect so much the court that it is not my desire for its decorum to collapse. What it played itself here before the long adjournment in, in this court is definitely leading to the collapse of the decorum of this court. And that will be blamed to the same court. I know, and you know, Justice Maumel, the court has to respect the litigant, the counsel. That is the example that court lead has to lead by. So that the counsel can know that there is a respect. And the respect, uh, Justice Maumel, is a reciprocal, it's not one way straight. It's a two-way, give and take. I have several times got instructions according to my, the way uh, the client and my instructing attorney. See this matter going. <coughs> See the way things are going. Not today, sometimes ago, that we don't see that the justice is going to be dispensed to us. These are the client. What is the way forward? What is a better way? What is the remedy? We believe that uh, advocate for the remedy is to give you instruction, recuse the court. And I've denied Justice Momela. I've advised against that instruction to recuse you. Despite the fact that I see what is happening, Despite the fact that they see, they are my bosses, they give me instructions. If I deny and I refuse their instruction, they will unemploy me and they will be reasonable. You have made it clear previously that we are deploying here. This city doesn't belong to us. I'm deployed by this uh, accused one to four. They need a justice. You have been deployed by the judge president of this court, division. Advocate Mushololo has been deployed by case number five. Baloi has been deployed by Shamila Patoy. We are all deployees, you were right. But of late, you become guilty of what you suggested at the end of the day. For me, when I have to make a humble submission on behalf of my client, you are saying to me, sit down.
like I'm this naughty boy. I may be a naughty boy, but not of this court. I deserve the respect from this court. As much as this court demands respect from me. So, if I cannot allow myself to be accomplished to the violation of the constitutional rights of my client and wrap us them the decision that I'm not part of, there are pertinent issues that I wanted to raise and of material effect to the benefit of my client, to the benefit of the justice system in this country. I'm not here to make my own rules. I'm a deployee, as you said. Now you seem to, go, uh, to be going against your own advice, you're, which is you're, you're, you're advice. repeating that point. Again. And you'll always say it's I'm about repetition. That, yes. That's where we differ. So you have I told am, me more than two times uh, about, about deploying. And that's when I come out to say, don't repeat. I have two, I tell, tell you all the time, I have two ears. I hear you each time. If I don't hear you, I will say, please repeat. Don't, no need to repeat. In progress of this, uh, 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 my, my, my standing or my address, that we needed to make an objection to the postponement and substantiate why. Make a submission. If we can be allowed the opportunity, as Mr. has been allowed opportunity, as our lawyer has been allowed opportunity, when the court come and make a, a ruling, after I would have made a submission, I'm not saying submission that I made, the court must take. I say, yeah, please hear me. Please hear one to four. It's a humble cry. Hear us out, your lordship. Justice. Let the justice prevail. That's what my client are asking, nothing more. This is what we want to make. Uh, that we are requesting that the dates as Mr. Baloy has been addressed, we need to be given opportunity. As we, it's our, it's my instruction that I should <coughs> object any attempt of postponement this matter in the best interest of justice and the fair trial. Section 35 of the Constitution is clear about the fair trial. That's my humble submission, Your Lordship, that we be given opportunity when we say we object to the postponement and we are ready to make submissions. Thank you. <coughs> and can I proceed with my submissions? No, I will have to hear the others. Thank you. Both dates are suitable to me, uh, 15 to 16 September, 14, 4 to 14 November, and I also uh, agree with the end blocking 16 January to 16 March, my lord. Five to 16 September. All three dates are suitable, my lord, as the court pleases. The, the, there is the issue that there is an application that needs to be made now. My Lord, I am the one who have requested the postponement, my Lord, when I found myself in a predicament of, being, of not being able to proceed with the cross-examination. 
My Lord will recall that when I asked for the adjournment, there was a witness in the box, my Lord. Which I still had to finish the cross-examination with, my Lord. But because of the unforeseen events that took place or emanated on the 8th, which is the previous appearance, I was then interjected, my Lord, from the line of questioning, of cross-examination. And I ask this court to give me a reasonable opportunity, my Lord, to go through the docket and prepare the defense case in order to be able with the cross-examination that I'm still in. As a result, my Lord, in terms of uh, the criminal procedure, there is no application that can be brought whilst I'm still standing doing the cross-examination. And I seek that I be afforded such an opportunity until I finish with my cross-examination. Then the court can proceed to listen to any other possible application. Those are my submissions, my Lord, as the court pleases. Please, the court, your Lordship. <coughs> Uh, no, I'm not listening to you now. I gave her the, the opportunity. He is also to speak. No, no, I, that, need, to reply. Then you'll, I you'll. need to reply before. Because I didn't say I want to bring an application. That's the problem. That's where the problem starts. That's what I want uh, to correct. That's, the, that's not the procedure I know. The procedure I know is that she has responded. He is going to respond. We are going to give you an opportunity. I want to correct now, her before. Now, because you are advocate, therefore, you want to speak now. That's where we differ. That's where we differ. And when we, we say, don't speak now, we are showing you disrespect. Your Lordship, I say, I just want to correct my, my learned colleague. I think no, I'm, I'm allowed. You will, co in you will co in correct her when it is your time to speak. It is not your time. I have not recognized you to speak now. That's where have, we differ. I don't have to leave it to, my, uh, to the state. I have to correct now. No. Because I didn't say. I don't want to listen to you now, advocate, therefore. That, that's the issue. That's where we differ. I want to listen to him. That's the procedure I know to apply in court. You are bringing me a procedure which is foreign to me, and I'm refusing to take it. If I say, Your Lordship, there is a oversight on the part of the court. This court is a human being. It's not infallible. I never said I want to bring application. I said I want to object to the postponement, and I want to make submission. Not application. But, but I didn't That's recognize I you correct. to speak now. I didn't recognize you to speak now. You don't just shoot up and speak. The court will give you an opportunity and it will surely give you an opportunity. Each time you want to speak and it's your time, you will speak. Not to inter interject before Advocate Baloy says what he needs to tell me. And you are con I told you, you are confusing me. I have to jump back to TEFO, jump back to TEFO, jump back to TEFO. That's not how it works. That's not how the procedure works. The Lordship, is it allowed when, as myself, the, uh, at the Council of 124, if I believe that I've been misinterpreted by the court, am I not allowed to correct the court? You are allowed to, protect, to correct the court when you. your time comes. There is some time. Not when, when you feel it's your time. No. When we go according to the procedures followed in courts of law, where we give people the opportunity to speak, and then because you started with this, you will, you will be given an opportunity to reply. That's how it works. I definitely understand, Your Lordship, that you and I, we are coming from the different school of law. That's where we'll clash. And you have agreed that it's allowed in the law that you know. If the court has misinterpreted you, myself, as a one to four, that I will never said I want to bring application. I said I'm humbly requesting this court to make submission based on my objection of the postponement. Thank you.
Baloi. My lord, in the circumstances which have been fully canvassed regarding the disclosure of the second docket, the state has already indicated, my lord, that we are not going to oppose the request of request of advocate Mshalolo. Reply. Thank you. Accused one to four, Elorship, we are vehemently of the big interest to oppose the contemplated uh, postponement in this matter. And we are here by making submission as to opposition to the contemplated uh, postponement because it won't be in the interest of Acts 1 to 4. It will not be in the interest of justice. As we say, in the maxim of law, justice delayed is justice denied. Our submission in opposition are as follows. We came to realize a material defect which does not give this court a jurisdiction to hear and grant the application contemplated by Advocate Mushololo. The jurisdiction of this matter is a common cause that is under the local division South Houting in Johannesburg. And as we stand before this court, the procedure in terms of the Minister of Justice to give this court a jurisdiction has been grossly violated. Section 110, read with Section 111 of the CPA, they have been violated. And here, I've got uh, Section what? Section 110. Section 110 is talking about when the accused have been brought before the court that does not have a jurisdiction. <laughs> Read with Section 11, I mean, Treble 1, 111, which is about the direction by the Minister of Justice to give the court that does not have initially did not have a jurisdiction to hear a particular matter, in particular this matter of Sevilla and four others, state versus Sevilla and four others. First of all, I mean, um, Cosmaras Cas 636, 10, 2014. And now here yeah, before this court is a Pretoria CC 67, <coughs> stroke 2020. This court does not have a jurisdiction to entertain this case. It is therefore in the same spirit that the contemplated application of Advocate Mshololo is being brought at the wrong court. Therefore, cannot be granted by this court. And that, if it has to, accuse one to four, if feel aggrieved, 
we will have to bring the application or we will have to bring the review or the appeal against I know this court has not yet ruled as to that application will be granted or not but in case it has been granted our grounds of review or grant of appeal will be based on the fact that the wrong court has granted postponement, which inherently was not supposed to have granted. Uh, we have, uh, there is uh, an extra triple, uh, double one, um, double A. It was handed before the court, Your Lordship. Can Your Lordship have that document in position? Because this is contemplated to be it's read as follows. Direction in terms of section 22, subsection 3 of the National Prosecuting Authority Act 32 of 1998, read with section 31 of the Criminal Procedure Act, Act 51 of 1977. Close quote. I now read this document for record. Investigations of Fosloras CAS 636 10 2014. Whereas I, Shamila Patoy, National Director of Public Prosecutions of the Republic of South Africa, deem it in the interest of the administration of justice that the of offense of murder, read with section 51 subsection 1, as well as Schedule 2, Part 1 of the Criminal Law Amendment Act 105 of 1997. Open quote, one count, close quote. Allegedly committed at or near Fosloras within the area of jurisdiction of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Houghton Local Division of the High Court of the High Court Johannesburg be investigated and decided upon within the area of jurisdiction of the Acting Director of Public Prosecutions, Gauteng Provincial Division of the High Court, Pretoria. I therefore hereby direct that the investigations in respect of the aforementioned matter be commenced and conducted, no, concluded for purposes of decision, decision making in the area of jurisdiction of the Acting Director of Public Prosecutions Gauteng Provincial Division of the High Court, Pretoria. Given under my hand at Pretoria on this 9th day of February 2020, that's the day when the battlery happened at Palapala Farm. It was on Sunday. Signed by Advocate S. Patoy, National Director of Public Prosecutions, the Republic of South Africa. Close quote. I, in confidence, take this honorable court uh, in terms of section 110 of the Criminal Procedure Act 51 of 1977. I was still young by then. The provisions of section 110 of the CPA 51 of 1977 reads as follows. Subsection 1. Where an accused does not plead that the court has no jurisdiction and it, and it at any stage. Uh, paragraph A. After accused has pleaded a plea of guilty or of not guilty. Or paragraph B where the accused has pleaded any other plea and the court has de determined such plea against the accused, appears that 
the court in question does not have jurisdiction. The court shall, for the purposes of this act, be deemed to have jurisdiction in respect of the offences in question. Sub section 2 of section 110, where an accused pleads that the court in question has no jurisdiction and the plea is upheld, the court shall adjourn the case to the court having jurisdiction. Close court. This is a section 110. Where of the concern, Your Lordship, naturally, and at some stage, I heard my learned colleague, Advocate Mushololo, raising that we could have pleaded other way around. Should I have known about the contents of 375? So here, that's where I'm supporting her. I mean, the uh, um, Section 110 is supporting her availment. That where an accused then the, uh, the, the, the court shall adjoin the case to the court of having jurisdiction. And read right with the provisions of section triple one of the CPA, 51 of 19, 1977, reads as follows. This is in relation to triple one, as it has been depicted on the so, uh, on annexure double A, that is purported to be read with section 22, subsection 3 of the NPA Act, 32 of 1998. And that's where we say there is a violation of section of the provisions of section triple one uh, by the DPP or minister himself. And then, yeah, subsection one, uh, subsection one of triple one reads as follows. Where the minister deems it in the interest of the administration of justice that an offense committed within the area of jurisdiction of one attorney general. In this regard, because we haven't changed our uh, statute, we are now NDPP be tried within the area of jurisdiction of another attorney general. He may, in writing, direct that criminal proceedings in respect of such offense be commenced in a court at a place within the area of jurisdiction of such other attorney general. Subsection two. Subsection two A. The direction of the minister shall set out the name of the accused, the relevant offense, the place at which, open bracket, if known, close bracket, and the provincial division in which the offense was committed, and the place at which the relevant criminal proceedings shall commence, and the provincial division in which such place is situated. Paragraph B of subsection 2. A copy of the direction shall be served on the accused, and the original thereof shall, save as is, save as is provided in subsection 4, be handed in at the court in which the proceedings are to commence. Close. Subsection 3 of table 1. The court in which the proceedings commence shall have jurisdiction to act with regard to the offense in question of such court. Subsection 4. Where the minister issues a direction under subsection 1 after an accused has already appeared in a court, the original of such direction shall be handed in at the relevant proceedings and attached to the record of the proceedings. And the court in question shall, paragraph A, where the accused is not in custody,
cause the accused to be brought before it. And when the accused is before it, adjoin the proceedings to a time and date and to the court in which the accused is to appear in accordance with the said direction. Sub paragraph, uh, paragraph B. Forward a copy of the record of the proceedings to the court in which the accused is to appear. And that court shall receive such copy and continue with the proceedings against the accused as if such proceedings had commenced before it. Subsection 5. The direction of the minister shall be final and not subject to appeal to any court. Close quote. That is the provisions of section triple one of the CPA, Your Lordship. Then I come back to Annexia AA. Uh, number one, violation of the jurisdiction. This document is purported to be the third direction by the minister. And this direction is not signed by the minister. This direction is signed by the National Director of Public Prosecutions. And furthermore, the purpose is not even centimeter next to the provision of triple one. The purpose of this document, double A, because this, it is clear, unless Advocate Baloy can prove me otherwise. Uh, it's talking about the investigation of Fosforas Cars 636 10 2014. And when I look at the signature, not the signature per se, but it was signed, it says, given under my hand at Pretoria on the ninth day of February 2020. And the signature is purported to be that one of Advocate Shamila Patoy, whom we know is the NDPP. And in terms of section 22, subsection 3, yes, can give the direction in terms of as to where the alleged offense can be investigated. She's got that power to investigate, not for the matter to be heard by the court. By the court is the minister. So there's no way more no, uh, where minister is appearing here. And then, furthermore, the revelations of this document. It was signed on the 9th of February, 2020. I checked, we checked the calendar that the 9th of February, 2020 was Sunday. And the day that we believe our Honorable Shamila Badoy is off. At home with their children. 9th of February, what year? 2020. If it wasn't because of Julius Malema reading the conference that uh, the butler at Palapala was on the 9th of February 2020, I wouldn't be aware. Furthermore, Your Lordship, we are so very much doubtful that unless we can be proven otherwise, because we are doubting even the signature that we're putting to be uh, of the NDPP. Unless we can be proven wrong. And the only, the only authority that can prove us wrong is the police investigation in terms of the document, a uh, question document. And even Ms. Pato herself. We, all, we are of the strong view that she should be called and come in the box there and tell and confirm or corroborate this document. And another revelation or the mystery of Lordship is that 
When this document was signed on the 9th of February 2020, this five please. Yeah. Five are accused. And I say deliberately five are accused because there are five are accused. I'm just saying, in case I want to be reprimanded, I don't talk about accused number five. But it's accused before this court. And I believe it's also before this court in the manner that if one to four are not in the manner that is proper, it applies to him. And we could not have been furnished. Let me say deliberately or reluctantly, given the reasonable reasons why this matter is before you, Your Lordship, in Pretoria. No reason at all. That's where we mooted that we would love if our Honorable Shamila Badoi can come and sit in that box and corroborate or deny. We so wish is our humble request that will follow and will substantiate why. So, what I'm saying, Lordship, when I say on the 9th of February 2020, whoever was the investigating officer in South African Police Service under 636-10-2014, this will, by extension, goes to my learned colleague on my right hand, Honorable Advocate Baloi, George by the name. was aware that accused were arrested. So the first time the accused appeared before the court, it was in Boxback on the 27th of October, 2020. As we were informed by the Honorable Minister of the Police, Mr. Kele, that during the press conference of the 26th of October, 2020, the South African Police Services breakthrough on the murder of Senzo Mayua, the Bafana Bafana and Orlando Paris keeper. It was nine months before my client were arrested. How on earth, Your Lordship, with a due respect, can this purport to be the certificate of giving you the inheritance of this matter. How on earth can you assume, can this honorable court assume the jurisdiction pre-hearing? So there was somebody, I don't know if uh, uh, Honorable Advocate Patoy is a practicing Gogo, the Sango. Nine months can contemplate that this matter will be here. What about the minister? <coughs> It's not for Advocate Patoy, as we have uh, just went through the provisions of uh, Triple One, that the directions and the jurisdiction will only be given to particular court. I mean, the jurisdiction will be given to a particular court by the Minister of Justice, provided it is in the
interest of administration of justice. So now, not Shemle Bato, as I said, she can only say, all right, uh, the police, together with my deputy director, or together with my senior prosecutor, maybe in this case we, uh, we talk about my learned colleague, Advocate Baloy. Let's agree that the matter being investigated under the DPP Mzinyati in Pretoria. <coughs> so, and then it's been taken from the DPP Mr. Chauke in Johannesburg. So, in essence, we can consider this annexure AA to be internal communication in the NPA. It's not the direction by the minister to give it this court a jurisdiction. My learned colleague will reply and can also prove us wrong or give us the relevant documentation because uh, it was his submission before this court that this is indication that this court can inherit or can entertain this matter. Uh, which this was preached nine, day, nine months before our client were arrested, as I said. So, Your Lordship, therefore, we submit that. SRQs 1 to 4. Whichever is the contemplated application before this court. And whatever has happened before this court in terms of <coughs> Sergeant Mosia giving the evidence in chief and I cross-examined him, <coughs> and my learned colleague, uh, Advocate Mifololo, cross-examined him, and she is still of desire that I must, she must continue, cross-examine Musia in terms of the contents of uh, 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 Fosforas Cast 375-01-2019. For which, Your Lordship, that content of that docket, which is not before this court, they've got nothing to do with them here. And now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether my learned colleague, Advocate Mushololo, is still having that asp aspiration or desire to continue the cross-examination of Messiah because it doesn't matter anymore. What we had, what she had, she had. It's a prick pointer, she's saying that. Whatever we had, we had. It doesn't matter. And it is in this spirit, Your Lordship, and I would love to say thank you very much for affording me this opportunity to support uh, the opposition of the um, postponement <coughs> requested by my learned colleague, Advocate Mushololo. And uh, <coughs> last but not least, which is very of, of important, because if indeed it would be found that this court does not have a jurisdiction. The game will change. Of the West, we will consider that our client have been kidnapped from Johannesburg to be brought here and tried against their will before this court. And we will deny that our client be prosecuted by the court that does not have a jurisdiction. However, because the court is the court is got the power, can make a ruling.
If this court make a ruling that, no. Despite the fact that we see what you are reading, then it will lead us somewhere. However, I now, uh, as I say, uh, this proceedings before this court as contemplated by uh, section, the provision of section triple one of CPA saying only if it's in the interest of administration of justice the minister can afford a particular court a jurisdiction but whereby the minister didn't afford that court such a jurisdiction and we have the client here. In my case, I've represented accused one to four. Accused one and two, when they were arrested, they were arrested outside. They were not serving any sentence in any court. I've got accused three and four who were serving sentence. And they were in the process when they were alleged of this mayor matter, they were in the process of appealing the conviction and the sentence of those um, matters. Accused number three was in Johannesburg prison, and accused number for us in Leuco. But I stand to be corrected. May I approach accused number four? Yes. Thanks for indulging your lordship. Um, until I was right, <coughs> accused number four, the J7 was signed by that honorable court that gave him the sentence to go and serve at Leukop, which is a jurisdiction of Johannesburg. And I was also right, correct, with the accused number three. The J7 was signed by that honorable court giving the sentence to serve at Johannesburg prison. And one and two were just arrested outside. So, if the procedure has to be followed in this regard... So, according to you, the implications of, have, of them having been arrested when they were outside, what are those implications? One and two. Yes. Yes. The implication is that, as per the provisions of uh, section section uh, uh, one ten, that says, if the accused insists that we are at the wrong court, then from here, the court has to adjourn, and they, because this court does not have a jurisdiction, this court today cannot say to them, you are remanded in custody. They just leave, they go home from here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It cannot be this court saying, you are in custody. So if a person is outside when they are arrested, when they appear in court, they should be told to go <laughs> home. Uh, uh, let me say this. Um, the court, somewhere in Boxback, yes. that sent them to court, that sent them to prison, because one is now in Modabin Binoni, and then one... No, 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 you are not replying. No, no, I, I, I want to study there, because it's a history. I want to say, um, 
But whatever you say by way of history, my question is, will still be one at the end of the whole story. Okay. You are saying whoever is arrested while they, were, they are outside, mm -hmm. when they appear, the day they appear in court, they should be told to go home. What I wanted to say before your Lordship interject, I wanted to say um, the court somewhere, the court that signed J7 for them to go to prison while they were literally not in prison, not saving any sentence, uh, it was misled by the Honorable Advocate Baloi. That court was misled. And at no stage, there was even an attempt. Actually, one and two, they've been in custody without a trial. Because we did consult. At no stage, there was never any attempt after they were arrested, so-called arrested in June. They were never taken to any court within 48 hours to apply for a bail. And they be given a bail if it is in the best interest of justice. So their situation was like that of pre-1994, apartheid system whereby there will be detention without a trial. That's what they have suffered up to today. I don't, I don't want to enter into further, an, an argument with you about without trial, because I thought we are in a trial. Before, before the 22nd of April, and then to further uh, make submission as to what are the consequences, I'll say further that the implications is that uh, as I was made, as at one stage I made an attempt previously in terms of the special plea. The implication is that accused one and two are unlawfully arrested and that is in violation of their constitutional rights. In terms unlawfully, of unlawfully arrested or detained or both? Unlo unlawfully. They are unlawfully arrested and unlawfully in detention. And that was unlawful after 48 hours, somewhere in June 2020. After 48 hours, they were still kept at the police stations, various police stations. So that arrest after 48 hours became unlawful arrest and detention, which persisted until the 22nd of April, when they pleaded not guilty. So, I shudder to think about the consequences of postponement to September. Let alone September. Even if it could be said to your Lordship that uh, we postpone overnight. The violation of their constitutional rights in terms of unlawful arrest and detention is continuation. Because, like I said, that is that perpetual detention without a trial. Yes. Your Lordship has said, yeah, we are just giving the benefit of doubt now they are in, on trial. But they are late anyway. It doesn't matter now whether we are in trial or not. And that matters making it worse is that when they believe to be before the court that is not, should not have inherited the jurisdiction to try them.
we may not disagree. In case we may not disagree, or in case this honorable court, despite the reason I've mentioned, you say no. The contemplated postponement by Mushololo should continue. We will humbly then, if it's like that, court would have said, the court has spoken. However, we'll follow the right procedure. And as long as we might have said, and we'll, uh, it will be humble request that those people in terms of uh, provisions of 110 and read with one, I mean triple one, they have to be asked to go home as contemplated and the court seek for the right and the parties negotiate if that is in the interest of justice, administration of justice, which court is the relevant court. And is the reason today, Your Lordship, in closure? We are in a catch-22 situation of two, two dockets. So, therefore, I say, these accused are before this court in terms of 636, not 375. 375, as it has been said, it will inherit the jurisdiction in Johannesburg where we are of the strong conviction that the suspected people contemplated in Exhibit C are the one who are supposed to be before the court and our client should be vindicated. More so, more so, and I need Advocate Baloy to listen carefully to this point, which is very, very, very important. More so, when they were arrested, First Law Rask, 636, 10, 2019, I mean 2014. At the time of their arrest, it was quashed. What does quash mean? That ticket was dormant. It was quashed after a lawful arrest of one Mr. Zama Kutlembat. Nonetheless, there has been another attempt now. This time, as if it was not enough to arrest one person, Zama Kutlembat. The state said, no, we need five. Zama Kutlembat alone was not enough. <coughs> So, it is in a relevant authority, Your Lordship, that Docket 636, when the accused were arrested, it was quashed because of unlawful arrest, the first unlawful arrest. Therefore, insofar as the conundrum of two tokens is concerned, Your Lordship. And as I've indicated, that Exhibit C and D were brought before this Honorable Court by Accused 1 to 4 in order to indicate that there is a relevant docket that must be entertained, but not by this court, but another court, which is in the South. This is our submission, Your Lordship, and then we'll hear from the Honorable State. Thank you.
Ähm, this morning, uh, advocate therefore, in my view, was in an attempt to bulldoze his way, procedure way, procedure wise. Uh, in as far as these proceedings are concerned, the court would have none of that, and, and I'll address it briefly. Um, and he, the court did not go the route. Uh, advocate therefore was forcing it to go for reasons that I shall explain. In due time, when his time came, Advocate therefore has addressed this court at length, an opportunity with, which was always at his disposal all the time when he was trying to bulldoze this court into a procedure which comes foreign to it. He mentions aspect of ethics and my view is very dim in terms of his adherence to ethics. In court, what obtains is that if you present something and the court overrules you, that is the end of the matter. Uh, albeit a temporary end because if injustice is brought to bear due to being overruled it becomes a matter or a point for later uh, on review or on appeal but what is surprising and it continues to surprise me is that uh, whenever Advocate, therefore, is overruled on any matter whatsoever. If you succeed after a long struggle to get him not to proceed, the next time you proceed, you, you give him an opportunity to address something else, however unrelated, he will go back to an issue on which the court has already given a ruling. Um, yet he purports to be a proponent of ethics. Um, there are issues, and I think he would be entitled to raise them, where he feels that... Uh, oh, before I go there, he, he harps on the issue of respect. And respect is when or disrespect to him is when after being warned and overruled by court several times, he insists on proceeding on the same issue about which the court has already given a ruling. And he, if you don't grant him his way, then you are not respecting him. And uh, I don't know what that says about his respect for the rule. The court is well vulnerable to erring in any ruling. Um, I do not think the court should think of itself as a whiz kid on any matter. It will err from time to time. And in our system, there's a way of dealing with instances where the court errs um, instead of adopting a no masafa attitude. We note where the court brought injustice to bear by way of ruling wrongly and we deal with it according to the law. And that is the measure in place to ensure decorum in our courts of law. And I want to repeat, I am subject to erring 
um, whoever will go and look at my work will find that other courts have corrected me from time to time, as will happen with any judicial officer. Um, the aspect which was pricky is that Advocate Mshololo is on the forum presenting a matter towards a particular direction, something that started in the absence of Advocate Defo. And when he comes, his approach is as if Advocate <coughs> Mshololo is not on the podium presenting a matter. And that is where we found uh, our differences, and that is where uh, he found cause to accuse the court of disrespect. Um, and he is right to say he cannot be expected to rubber stamp. Um, and he claims that he is not bringing his own rules. But I must say that I am yet to read the rules advocate, therefore, operates upon. Um, and that is what gives me the jitters if I were to apply them the way he wants me from time to time to apply those rules. And I keep on saying the rules for court processes are written down in black and white. And court etiquette and court practice has ordained that in court and a party will present a matter or an application, the counterparts will be given an opportunity in their turn to respond to what has been, pre uh, what has been presented. And when they have done so, uh, as happened this afternoon, after a long struggle with Advocate Defo, the person who rose with the matter will be given a, 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 an opportunity to reply. And in the reply, um, Advocate Defo brings issues that were not on the table of his counterparts, Advocate Msholon and Advocate uh, Baloyi. Partly he blames, he blames the court for having uh, not given him the opportunity to bring those issues on the table. Maybe that is an argument for another day. However, how, whichever way you look at the presentation and the responses, um, some new issues, uh, I don't know whether new is the word, but some issues for consideration have landed on the table of this court. Um, which go to suggest that uh, this matter is wrongly before this court. As I sit here, I have my views, but I'm not a party. Um, I think it will be best to grant the opportunity to the parties concerned to respond to uh, some pertinent issues before we proceed with this matter. Um, before I name those aspects, Advocate Mshololo, like any other defense counsel, wants time to go about preparation of the defense of her client. 
a right which should be available at her disposal and her client's disposal by virtue of the reading of the constitution of this country. Um, and therefore the court, I think uh, it has been mentioned that uh, if the court does not rule the way advocate therefore prefers, then it should ready itself up for something coming by way uh, of a review or whatever other legal process. <coughs> Looking at the scenario, I have been told as I sat here that there's a day way in the past when Advocate Deforward was favored with a copy of the so-called second docket. Uh, it is therefore understandable that Advocate therefore is at home with issues from the second docket. That is why he was able to articulate on some of them this, morning, this afternoon. But that is not the case for Advocate Mshololo. It is not the case for Advocate Baloy, who both claim that uh, this docket, which Advocate therefore had all the time, was given to them at a later stage. The case for Advocate Baloy may be questionable, as Advocate therefore raised it, but there is no denying that Advocate Mshololo was not favored with a copy of the second docket at an appropriate time. And this is what is bringing the delays we are experiencing. And in respect of the rights of accused number five, um, the court will be very inclined to a reasonable or to a postponement over a reasonable period of time. Um, whilst advocate Mshololo goes over what has been recently discovered to her and whilst she considers her options which of which she has already mentioned that uh, it may include further consultation <coughs> with her, her client um, and where she also mentioned that she cannot rule out a particular application uh, coming the way of this courtroom. Um, the court has identified certain aspects that have to be put into perspective. And having said that, it may require that all that Advocate Tefo was mentioning before court this afternoon be reduced into heads to which everybody concerned shall respond so that in between the time uh, Advocate Mshololo uh, will be going the route she has mooted, um, something unfolds that brings clarity and a way forward regarding the aspects I'm about to mention. And it may well be more of a baby for the purposes of Advocate Baloy. The first point is that the minister did not sign. Like I said, I have my views, but uh, I'm not a party. The minister did not sign the relevant document. The DPP in the person of Advocate Shamila Batoy signed. Um, we may require a pointed response to that aspect. Secondly, that uh, even if 
Advocate Shamila Batoy signed a relevant document. Its reading suggests that she signed on a Sunday um, where she was supposed to have uh, to, to be home and not in an office. Um, like I said, I have, a, I have my own view. I have signed documents on any day of the week, but I'm not a party. Um, thirdly, accused number one and two were outside when they were arrested. I tried to pursue this with advocate. Uh, therefore, I didn't get a pointed answer, uh, but I have come to perceive his reasoning to be that in this case, because they were outside when they were arrested, after their first court appearance, they should have been allowed to go home. Alternatively, uh, because he doesn't put it in so many words, alternatively that advocate therefore has issues with the fact that after the initial arrest, accused number one and two were not made to appear before a court of law within the ordained period of time, which is 48 hours. Um, and thirdly, um, which points to advocate Baloy, um, that when they, when accused number one and two appeared for the first time before court and were their case was postponed with them in custody. Um, that happened because Advocate Baloi misled the court. Um, I had questions on this one, which I decided not to ask because it would border towards me making myself a party on these matters. Uh, these are the issues that came through as more pointed among others as advocate therefore addressed court. And my suggestion is that we find a way of addressing addressing them. Whilst we well whilst we have had advocate Mshololo um, indicating that she needs time to do one, two, three, which I will not repeat it will be wise of us to deal with these issues, whether it includes calling people before court that are not here or, or having their um, affidavits, um, but that should all be captured in heads that the court shall study and make a ruling um, and something pleased me uh, this afternoon uh, where for the first time in some bit of long time I had advocate therefore saying where the court to rule out of uh, or, or to rule not in tandem with his aspirations, he will, he contemplates or reserves his right to launch a further legal process. And that is how lawyers respond to anything that courts rightly or wrongly pronounce. So, because we, have, we had a date about what Advocate Mshololo had, um, or, or thought of doing, uh, I think we should have a nearer date in order to uh, address this. Um, I must be well understood. I'm not ordering anybody to do or to come to court who feels that they are not supposed to be before court. All I need is for these issues to be addressed, whether by way 
of getting some people to come who are not here or by way of uh, submitting affidavits that will bring the court up to speed regarding the issues raised. Uh, my, my strong view is that uh, the terrain is not all that flat to just blind, blindly proceed with this matter, with these serious issues. Um, the last I find myself with serious egg on face uh, at a later stage with these issues have been, having been raised. This, for now, this ra these issues may or may not be founded, but it is better to arrive at a decision rather than to, to land there without consciously deciding. Um, because for me, it determines whether we are on the correct train in terms of proceedings in this case. Um, and it brings to mind a quotation by Bonhoeffer, which says, once you board a train, once you board the wrong train, it doesn't matter how fast you run to the opposite direction. That train will still take you to where it is going. Um, so for that, I, I, I would that we find a date uh, where um, Advocate Baloy thinks he will be ready with these issues. Because I presumed that the manner these issues came out, it may be that uh, Advocate Mshalon and Advocate Baloy are not prepared for all the issues that were raised. But if they were, my issue is that they reduce their responses into, into heads. As a court, please, my lord. Um, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, would it not have been perhaps better for Advocate Default to bring a substantive application and then reducing his um, arguments to, to writing yeah. and we can then we can agree on a timetable then we can respond to that because yeah. you know, one of the issues that he raises is the reasons why jurisdiction was transferred yeah. and um, one is not always sure as to exactly what are all those issues so at least if they are in a written form we can yeah. then address those, those, those issues uh, uh, pertinently my lord. Yeah, well, it is exactly why I myself cannot rule towards any direction after his presentation because uh, um, it, is, it did not come clear, which I think will, be, will not be the case if it were to be captured yes. into heads. Yes. Um, it is again why I am saying that uh, we should have heads so that we have something formal yes. to which all can respond formally. Yes, indeed. Ma and about which court can pronounce formally. Yes, and, and about which there will be no doubt, you know, as yes. uh, uh, unlike it is at the moment. Yes. Sorry. I again trying to demote you, your lordship. Um, I'm amenable to but I'm just only opponent of uh, substantial because I've learned to know and understand when Advocate Balu is a substantial, there is something that is uh, launching for. Something will be brought here relevantly so, and then the so-called substantial, because substantial is a sublinear to me. Um, it's like, uh, as I know him, that is a font of uh, guerrilla warfare style to ambush. Um, I'm unable to bring submission in writing as per instruction, and then on that issue are you, of are you not launching an application? Pardon? Is this not an application on your part? 
No, I was just responding to him. Yeah, this. I, I'm saying if if it is an application, yes. there's only one way of launching an application. It has to be substantial to enter to be entertained. Yeah. About the booby traps advocate mm -hmm. Baloy is capable of. Yeah. You are a soldier, you'll see how to <laughs> to defuse yeah. those booby traps. Um, we cannot forsake a, a known procedure just because we are afraid of booby traps. Yeah, I would just like to remind the Honorable Court that it's just not coming to me. Like, I'm just me. I'm just me. No resources. Remember, it comes with the state resources. So that what is very important for the court to be aware of. However, I'm saying that in terms of the, what the court mentioned, in case I heard the Honorable Court say, if there would be the people that had, had to come here, or the affidavit. Um, we are dealing with the criminal proceedings here, leadership. So if there will be any affidavit, it has to be the followed by the author. Because I don't think we will, I just wish and I just pray that somebody should not depose an affidavit and thereafter the person become uh, permanently absent on earth, whereby we will have to go and try to uh, bring the application in terms of the provisions of Section 3 of the Law of Evidence Amendment Act. So it's a natural that once there is an affidavit, then it has to be come and corroborated by the author. Like I said, unless the natural volition has taken its place, someone is absent forever. So, and then I do understand the giving the benefit of doubt this predicament, it will be supported or substantially be brought as per the instruction. As it please the court, your Okay, uh, and further to that, um, there was a overlooking or oversight but was not deliberately on the side of the court that insofar as uh, the accused are concerned, one and two, because it will be injustice if we have to agree on the date for which is a procedural to say on this date the court will put us in tender, hold us, in terms to say the counsel for accused one to four bring your substantive application on this date and serve the state serve Mushalolo and then if there is a reply or answering because those will be the allegations and uh, the Leonard Court will teach me here, because I'm still very much learning your lordship. We depend on you for the guidance, because you've seen a lot of things before we see them. You are a father, you are a grandpa. Um, in so far as holding us in terms say from today, in three days, defense for one to four, bring your substantive, substantial application in relation to the jurisdiction. And then, in 48 hours or in two days, advocate uh, uh, the state, answer those allegations. And then, when I say I need the guidance from this honorable court, I don't know what to say to Advocate Mushololo because she's uh, my fellow defense. And it seems as if now we are, the defense is not united. And as you can know, Your Lordship, that. Yeah, let me request you to four. address me. Leave her alone. She's running. She's. Parallel. Yeah, no, no. You, you, you told us, <laughs> you told us this, this afternoon yes. that uh, 
you are afraid that your clients will unemploy you. Okay, yes. Yeah. Now, don't push her to be unemployed by a client. Okay. Let her independently run the defense of a client. Thank you, Lordship. So, uh, the guidance that in between or in the meantime, yes, I'm of the support of uh, the expeditious uh, hearing of this matter as it is material. Where it will put my client, accuse one, two, three. Why accuse one, two, three? Accuse one, two, three, as I said, that if there is any postponement today, as we postpone, obviously we are not going to sleep here. And I don't foresee that I will get the answer today. Yeah. What will put Maybe my I client? should give you a quick answer to that one. Yes. Uh, similar to an answer I have already given you in some other unrelated issue in this very trial. Um, in our legal system, one of the things we do is to apply the rules of natural justice. Yes. And one or the, a rule of natural justice that is relevant, uh, that comes to point here as you are saying what you are saying, is that uh, is one that says uh, Audi partam partam. <laughs> I don't know whether it's called the, what you are saying, um, um, but in English it goes here the other side. Yes. Yeah. And now um, I do not think the your clients woke up one day and decided to walk to a prison. Somebody took them to a prison to a prison or a into incarceration mm. and I agree. you are you are now saying they should be allowed to go home before we hear from the person who put them where they are and and the court is not likely to do that simply because it has to respect uh, that rule of natural justice mm. in the process that you are you are you are demanding uh, i mean the process that the the pace of which you demand should be a fast one. Um, I think uh, that rule will be accommodated uh, uh, because I don't think we, we will have a situation where people are arrested and they go to court. Somebody who, arrest, who, who did not arrest them but is merely assigned to hear their case decides that they are going home. There might be some things we don't know. I don't know. So I will be more comfortable if I hear from uh, the quarters that ensured that they be incarcerated. Yes, but I know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yes, I yeah. agree. Yeah. The difference between me and you is that I don't know, and until they come, I don't know. No. This is reasonable, I would say. So the process can be that one of expeditious in terms of um, advocate, advocate, uh, and advocate Baloy. Um, I agree full square with advocate. Therefore, that for this aside issue, we we real, really need maximum speed, um, lest we continue to undermine the rights of, of I, would, I would agree with him and, and say of everyone, including your client. So, but I wouldn't put it in terms that he put it, that he, give, he gave himself more, more time. Uh, and when you have to address those many issues that he was addressing about, he gave you 48 hours. I, I, I think I wouldn't go along with that. Uh, but I think reasonably um, we should be at a fast pace in dealing with this this matter. I think, my lord, that can be arranged amongst the councils yes. the, regarding the time frames for the exchange of uh, the documents. Yeah. As the court business. Advocate Baloy. Indeed, we are agreeable to um, a timetable for the exchange of papers. The the the. The, the only question, my lord, that remains is the date to which the case must then be postponed. Yeah, I, I'm saying because it's a, 
you, you, you be, you be, you determine. This is a, a criminal matter. In criminal matters, we are used to having the accused before court when we deal with those cases. Um, and it would seem uh, much as it won't assist the process we are talking about. Um, I don't see any reason for not requiring them to appear when issues will be, especially when we are also touching on issues of, uh, uh, jurisdiction. Of, of, of jurisdiction and issues of incarceration yes. or, or being let out. But I do not think for the immediate foreseeable future when there shall be submission, um, I don't think we need them here, I th and I don't even think we need you here. I would think that uh, there will be an interaction between the parties regarding the heads, and when those heads are argued, that is when we will um, determine we will depend, determine that they be before court. And that is why I asked what would be the, the, the most immediate date we gather here for this matter. I would, I would even go as far as to say that uh, uh, for that purpose, I would, I would impotent all of you to even venture into, into, into recess time uh, so that we find a day to deal with those heads uh, which will then give me an opportunity to find time to uh, come up with a response to the submissions you will have made. Yeah. As the court pleases, my lord, um, I think that would mean we still need to consult with the role planners. Uh, you know, one cannot just postpone a case without their consultation because. Yeah, I suppose the JP also has seen that this is a partly head matter. There also has got to be a, a consultation with the... With yeah, the we are way over our time. Um, and as for the one going to Kosimampuru, you, you, may, you may even say now the, that person will not have supper, which is unfair. Yes. Um, should we not postpone overnight? and deal with that aspect, consult the role planner and all and everything so that we come with an informed view tomorrow. This in order with us. Advocate Tefo, you are excluding yourself. Tomorrow. No, no. I'm saying, I asked the question, yeah. the rest have given an answer you, you didn't. I say yes. you are excluding yourself. We postponed this matter overnight. Yes. That's correct. Uh, as court basis is Okay. Yes. Please rise. I should bring it to the attention of the court to say it is wrong for the interpretation not to be done to the accused because they do not understand what has been exchanged before this court. Even yeah. I'm not saying it must be done now, but it is wrong that interpretation is not done. Yeah, I'm asking myself if I were an interpreter, when would I have? Thank you, Madam. <laughs> when would? Yeah, all all you may do is to remind us that tomorrow, either formally or informally. An interpretation should pro should precede whatever happens. Okay. Thank yeah. you, my lord. Yeah. Sorry, my lord. It's not that. 
I was taking notes. I got the notes. No, no, no. I it know. Take us until tomorrow. I, I, I know. That's why I'm saying, uh, from the interactions, I don't know when you would have interpreted all that. Um, so, with the accused in custody, this case is postponed by agreement overnight in order to determine the way forward uh, in the manner explained. Um, I think we start at 10 as usual um, with this matter. So, call again at 10 and It is again a reality that uh, we would not expect Mr. Musia to be here.